Hey everybody, Brandon Taylor here from Taylor Entertainment. I am hanging out with Three Gun Whiskey at the Mackey Ranch, and we're gonna do a little bit of a rig rundown. Stay tuned, check it out. Hey Jed, what's happening, man? How, how you doing, Brian? Pretty good. How are you doing? Good, good. Hey, what's that shirt you have? Uh, it's a. I bought it from a venue we played a couple times, Bar Genta down the road. Um, they started selling these shirts to help out the waitresses and bartenders out of work right now. So I drove down there and threw them twenty five bucks and got a t shirt. Very cool. Hey, I've got a wild question to ask. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? X ray vision. X ray vision. Why? Close button. Do, they don't answer that. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I just wanted to kind of, we're going to do a little bit of rig rundown like we talked about earlier. Uh, just wanted to ask a couple questions before we really get into it. Absolutely. How has the coronavirus affected Three Gun Whiskey? Uh, it's, as everybody else, it's halted our, our touring and our, our local gigging. Um, we just spent a lot of time writing and, uh, and really kind of getting our show to where when we finally get out there, it's something different for people to see. Sure. And I know we kind of talked a little bit off, offline about the transition into where you guys are kind of going, right? Can you elaborate a little bit on where you're going? Well, like most bands, we started out playing cover music. Um, we noticed when we played covers, we played them faster, harder than, than they were written. Um, so I think that our, uh, our originals have all kind of have shown that. They're, they're faster, harder hitting, more of a southern rock sound than just a, a traditional country sound. But of course, all the traditional roots in there. Very cool. If you guys are wondering if he's as big as it looks on the camera, it's true, but I'm not scared of him. <laughs> Only Mike Tyson. That's it. Hey, let's, uh, let's get into the guitars a little bit. So, so what do you want to say about the, the rig here? Okay, okay, what, well, what have you got? I play, I play two guitars on stage. Um, I, I used to gig with an acoustic all the time. Now, now I just play electric on stage. Um, these are both Fender Telecasters. This is an American, um, both of them American standards. Uh, this. This one here, I don't know if you can see it. Um, just standard maple neck. Um, nothing's wrong with the guitar. I, I took the pick guard off because I was going to buy a black one and I bought the wrong one. So I realized that it's a beautiful piece of wood in there and I love the tobacco burst. So I just left the thing off. And it, like I said, gives a little bit more of a gritty look without the pick guard on there. So right. Just a standard American Telecaster. Hey, I realize as we're doing this, I'm having a beer and you don't have any whiskey in your hand. Oh, it's right here. Okay. I figured you'd have to pick stuff up, so, <laughs> so I, I got plenty right here. There you go. Right on, that's a beautiful guitar, man. Uh, so are there specific songs? That, is it set in a specific tuning? How do you guys kind of go through a set list? Then? We, um, really the only person that changes tuning is me. Um, okay. I, I do a lot, a lot of stuff in drop beat. And I don't have a separate guitar, basically, this is my primary guitar, and that's my secondary, and really that only gets picked up if I, if I drop a string, break a string on this guitar. Gotcha. Um, this one, we do the same thing, same, same guitar, and I've done some mods to, the, to both of them. But, uh, what, are you, what are you doing? Um, I'll, 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 I'll upgrade upgrade so, a little bit. So basically, um, maple necks, what I've done is I don't touch anything when I'm on stage. So my tone's wide open, I only use the bridge pickup, and on this guitar, I just took the bridge or the neck pickup out and I switched all this around so my volume's right here because I found the way the telecasters come I, the volume was in a different spot I, I like being able to roll off and roll on um, and these are have you ever heard of Lucky Dog guitars? Sure. Okay um, I stumbled upon Lucky Dog because uh, Steel Woods Wes okay. he, had, he had a custom guitar made and um, I'm on the list to get one hopefully one day I'll, I'll be able to get it but um, he makes these um, uh, knobs here. I don't know if you can see them. They're, they're super, I mean, really gritty. And I just, I switched the, uh, everything switched around so my volume's right here where they're not stock on telly. And when I'm playing, I just basically can reach down and, and turn it on and turn it up. Right on. Um, this one, funny story about this guitar is, it, it's really not that old. But um, I w had, had a couple drinks and, and scratched the piss out of it. And this is from, this knock tears from Dave's they are lead players guitar yeah. guy he slammed into me one night and then I scratched we, his, were I you at mosh pitting? yeah yeah that's awesome yeah it was weird when I put my pants back on but <laughs> anyway, um, 
so uh, I scratched this thing real bad. I'm like, I want to sand this out. And I started sanding it and realized that, that this guitar was originally, you know, real bright white. And I, and I didn't like how much it, it was too white. So I, sure. start, I, I started sanding on the thing, basically. And, gotcha. and, and I was trying to get that scratch out. Next thing I knew, there was wood down there. So I just got bored and started Very cool. sanding on it. And, um, both the guitars, I have, I, the necks, I like to sand on the necks. Um, I don't know if my guitars work past like the sixth fret. Yeah. You know, I don't play up there. I leave that to Dave. Um, but I do, I do like the feel of the fatter necks and, and with the with them sanded down a little okay. bit. So I've done that. Original pickups in both. Um, this, the, they both. I'm sorry. This one has the Tex-Mex pickups in it, and that one has I can't remember the name of the pickups in there, but they're they're the the um, I I think they're both the Tex-Mex pickups. Um, but I love I love the way this guitar sounds, even though it's my number two. I love the way that one looks. I love the way this one sounds. I think a number it, two. Just, <laughs> yeah, right. Every just again. just yeah. the way it works. Right on. If you could add any guitar to your inventory, what would it be? Um, well, I just I just recently bought a new acoustic guitar. Okay. Um, I didn't. I don't usually tour. Uh, take that out. Um, and out here, it's kind of humid out here practicing in the barns here. Um, but I bought a, a Gibson J45. Very now, cool. I like the I like the fatter necks, so I bought the 50s issue mm -hmm. um, reissue guitar because it does have a fatter meteor neck to it. Okay. But that, that guitar is by far my favorite guitar. But like I said, I, um, I don't like taking it out very much. When we first started, I played acoustic only. I was played Martins. I grew up playing Martins. Um, but that, that Gibson J45 is just, it, there was something about the way those sounded. I got one and I, I, I don't know if I'll ever buy another Martin guitar. I just love the way the, the J45 sound. Right on. A couple more questions for you. Bucket list venue. Where would you want to play? You can play anywhere in the world. Well, I, the, the, the Ryman, it, we, we've talked this before. We're, uh, we're on a podcast, talked about it. And I'm gonna steal. I'm gonna steal one from Dave um, because I grew up listening to it. But I want to play Austin City Limits. Very cool. I want to be on PBS at nine o'clock on Saturday night and play Austin City Limits. There you go. The, the second best, the, the second one I'd like to do, which is not just a single venue, is um, I really want to do U.S. and tour. I would really right. like to go and travel to places I've been when I was in service and go there and entertain troops. I'd like to go to Iraq. I'd like, well, we're not there anymore. But I'd like to go to Afghanistan and any other forward four areas and, and go entertain the guys. Right on. Okay, if you're going to go on that tour, who are you going with? I don't need anybody else. Just us. Just you? Yeah. Right. Yeah, maybe, right. maybe some cheerleaders or something. You know? Okay. Yeah. I can get down with that. That could <laughs> yeah. be a totally new venture. Yeah, like the Vikings cheerleaders and three gun yeah. whiskey. I think it'd work. I dig it. I dig <laughs> it. Well, Jed, hey, uh, we talked about the guitars. What, what about the amp? Um, I've been I've been through a couple amps. Um, this was literally I, you know, everybody talks about oh, I'm going to do a blind test and see. This amp I probably would have never purchased, but when I went and played it, this is a Vox AC30 S1. Um, it's got a Celestian Cream back speaker in it, which gives me a little bit more loads. Okay. Um, like I told before, I do a lot of stuff in drop with in a drop detuning. Sure. Um, the way Dave, Dave, our lead player, is, is, is fucking amazing, and he's up and down that neck, and in order to support him, I needed to have something a little different. Um, he plays a Fender amp, you'll see later. Um, I wanted to, you know, we got Brandon playing, playing as solid bass as you can get, and I needed something to punch through the mix with my rhythm guitar. Um, this amp, it's, it's a, like I said, AC30 is 30 watts. Um, I run it pretty hot on the game. My clean channel isn't super clean. Okay. Um, but this is the amp that I found that I played, that I, when I plugged into it, it just made my telly sound right. It made the limited pedals I run sound right. Sure. And, and in the mix, I have a separate sound to where it actually sounds like there's two guitars playing like I think it should. Right on. Hey brother, we had a couple drinks. Cheers. Get loose. Let's talk about the pedal. The pedal board's not as simple as Dave, but it's simple. Um, <laughs> from right, right to left, I'm just running a tuner. Keep my guitar in tune. There you go. I'm running a, a MXR um, compressor. I keep that thing on all the time. I kind of use it more of a uh, boost 
it, it is doing the compression job. I, I turn it up a little bit so I get, I get, it gives me a little bit of a punch. Um, next pedal, the old tube screamer. Um, Scream it. I, I went through a couple different, um, I ran the OCD for a little bit and some other pedals, but I just love the sound of the old school tube, tube screamer. Right on. Um, after that is a phaser pedal, an MXR phaser. Um, I really like the way that phaser, I mean, everybody from Waylon to, to Van Halen there you go. Play, played the MXR right, phaser. Right. Um, I love the way that thing sounds, and then I, I switch a lot between those two for my cleans with the phase, either phase on or phase off. Sure. And then the last pedal, I said it's not very, you're not getting a big pedal board here. Sure. Um, last, last pedal I keep on all the time is the, the uh, MXR um, carbon copy delay. I okay. keep that thing on. And I just have it set for a little bit of slap back, and on the so on my cleans it gives me that little bit of, of, of slap back for it, and it's just simple. It's on there. So on sounds stage, sounds like sounds uh, like you like to keep it simple. Yeah, on stage I'm just hitting a, hitting a button and going. It's hey, easy. There's absolutely zero wrong with straightforward country and or rock and roll. Yep. There, there's and it you want to see simple wait till you. Get talk to Dave about his stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, my, mine's an easy switch back and forth. Uh, there you uh, go. My clean is clean. Um, I run a phaser and then I run the tube screen. That's it. With just the, the MXR, both MXR, the, the compressor and the delay on all the time. It's right easy. on, man. Hey, Jed, it was great getting to know you, getting to know your rig, getting to know a little bit more about Three Gun Whiskey. I've had a great time with you tonight. We're always a good time. Oh, it's good time. We're gonna have a couple more drinks. Cheers. Might call tonight, might not. You never know what's gonna happen. But I'll tell you one thing, we'll be back for segment two with Guitar Day. Have a good one. Here we are, segment two, Three Gun Whiskey. Going to do segment three in a little bit with Mr. Brandon Hayes. Right now I've got the one and only Guitar Dave. Now Guitar Dave is a lead guitar player, so this is probably going to be about 60 minutes to 75 minutes long. Is that right? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? Hey, it's not. This dude is as simple as simple comes, when, and except for when it comes to lead playing. Where'd you get that hat? At the Farm and Fleet in Champaign. Farm and Fleet, I yeah. think it's like a welder's hat. That's legit yeah. blue color country. Mm -hmm. right there. Although I'm not a welder. Brandon's the welder in the band. But okay. Because he wore these hats, I just thought they was cool. I so dig them. Yeah, I, I dig them. Yeah. I've seen that entire tomb, like, mm -hmm. all right, I got that. Okay, hey, you also seem like a guy that's no BS, wants to kind of cut down to the chase. Tell me about the guitar. What we got there? Can't remember what year it is, but I got this one off of my brother. One of probably three or four that I have gotten off of my brother. I've had it for about 10 years, I think. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, that looks like Tom Brady in the fourth quarter of a Super Bowl right now. Tell me about the white tape. What we got going on? Well, the white tape, on the switch is because the switch is a little bit out right now, so okay, okay, I cut out, so that's just kind of holding it down to a point to where I can still get a signal. There we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What's that electrical tape? What we got going on here? Well, that's because sometimes when I would play, my high E string would get caught up under the the all pickup right, screen. All right, that's ingenuity yeah. right there. Yeah, you betcha. Okay, well, we got something missing. What? Where'd the pickup go? In there. But I took it out. <laughs> I took it out because when I play, yeah. uh, my pick keeps scraping up against the magnets okay. on the pickups. And it just, yeah, so I just, I took that pickup out and I put it in the lap steel. Right on, right yeah. on. Okay. Pretty interesting. Uh, really interesting, actually, mm. what you got going on there. And of course, lead players. Mm. Always unique. I get the switch fixed, white tape goes away. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Right on. Tell me about the amp here. What do you got? Fender Hot Rod Deluxe I bought off of a singer of mine probably 15 years ago. can't remember uh, 
boy, year it is, but it's got what I need. Got what you need. Do what I do. Again, when it yes. comes to, I, I know I mentioned, I think with the rhythm, uh, lead players even more so, they have to have that tone. When I, when I play this lead, I've got to have that tone. Yeah. And I feel like that comes from it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, okay. What do we have right here? What's going on right here? That's the lap steel that got off of Brandon. That he got off of a buddy of his for 25 bucks. And 25 bucks, huh? He wasn't doing much with it. So he gave it to me, and yeah, here I it just, is. I really got into it. Yes. So something I noticed on the recording: Did any of the songs change once you once you got this? You know, well, you when he first gave it to me, what song was it? Was it "Batter and Blue"? "Batter and Blue," "Batter and Blue." Well, when he first gave it to me, I would play loops, sure, uh, uh, chord progressions on my okay. computer, and, and I play loops, and I plug that into that, and I just, yeah, it was really cool. And then when we started writing, "Battered and Blue" was one of the first songs that we did. Very cool. And so, since this was new to me, doing this new song, it was like. I could have written what I was going to on a guitar and have been able to play it out, but I had this lap steel. So I took that song and I did what I did on the lap steel. And yeah, very yeah, cool. that's really cool. Very cool. Yeah. Guitar Dave is also a vocalist. Um, mm. Again, three man front. Hey, what I gotta say is out of that, we have gathered about as much as we would ever gather from a lead guitar player which is not much because they're always unique. They always want to hide uh, what they really do well. And they're just crazy dudes. So we're going to go to segment three with Brandon Hayes in just a little bit. You guys have a good night. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with Three Gun Whiskey for segment number three. Three with Mr. Brandon Hayes, the low end. And when I say low end, I mean some mean low end. Brandon, what's shaking, brother? Not a whole lot. It's just it's living life, man. It's living, <laughs> do, doing what we can, right? That's right. Hey, I've got an intriguing question for you. All right. All right, in one corner you have The Undertaker. In another corner, you have Goldberg. Who's coming out on top? Taker. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Without that, question. That quick, huh? Yes. That quick. Yeah, because if it's any quicker than that, then uh, Goldberg will gas out. <laughs> he can't last longer than five minutes. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. One more. One more. I've got Undertaker, and I've got Stone Cold Steve Austin. Still taking Taker. Are you? Yes. Taking Taker. Yep. I'm not disagree and go with Stone Cold, because... I want to give a hell yeah right now. Hell <laughs> yeah. to disagree right there. Hey, brother, we're not here to talk wrestling, uh, but we'll talk about that later. Let's let's get the the rig rundown going. Okay, what what are you working on? Well, I've got me you know your basic five string P bass, five string because I have much lower range because E's just not low enough. And plus, with Jed tuning down to D all the time, I don't have to retune because I got D right here, and I can go all the way down to B. Boom. So yeah. I can go two octaves lower these guys sometimes, which is even cooler. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. So you're saying it's as simple as the same bass all night long. You don't have to throw one to the guitar tech, the bass tech, him throw you one back. And... Bass That's... tech. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> no, not really because, well. You I mean, fired I... him, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that and, that's that and I just had the same set of strings on here for a year and a half. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't have to worry about breaking strings. Right on. Right on. I dig it, I dig it. Simple cells, man. Yep. Hey, we've covered real quick. We've, we've breezed over the base. Let's talk about the amp. Yep, well, we have a Galen Kruger MB500, 210 inch speakers. Um, it's just, for me, it's just got the perfect sound. I've been through Fender stuff, um, you know, small combos, full stacks, even played a Fender stage, 
you know, I tried it out. It had a hundred presets on there. Great for a rock cover band, but just I couldn't find the right sound. So I bought a, another GK off of my friends, plugged it in. I was like, oh, this is exactly the sound I was looking for. So I got the 500 watt combo, and it's, that's what I've been using live ever since. Right on, man. Hey, that's cool. You know what? Something I'd like to ask you. As you get older, you know, you're younger. Uh, I know for me, when I was younger in, in metal bands, I just wanted to scream in everybody's face. Right. Right. Uh, you get a little bit older, and you realize that you you may need to temper things. So, from a bass player's perspective, when you when you first decided I'm going to be a bass player, you bought the big rig. Right. <laughs> so, what what happened from that? Right. You're like, yeah, big rig. Okay. Talk to me about the getting to a little bit older older of a stage and, and really just appreciating the tone. Well, you know, I mean. Even way back when in high school, I had you know I had the big Ampeg SVT, and you know it looked cool. You rolled around hell. I even rolled my truck over and threw the damn thing out, and it was still good after that. <laughs> right. On. And uh, but I ended up selling it, you know, and I don't know because like I said, I mean it's it when you're playing metal and stuff, you want everything to look big, and and you know, and I I think the moment I really realized where you didn't have to have a big setup was when I went and saw Willie Nelson. Okay. And everyone else is, you know, playing little bitty tiny amps like that. Although his bass player did have an SWR rig with two four by tens, but they're at the assembly hall. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But we don't you know, we're playing smaller stages and if you're trying to load everything in the back of the truck sure. for a play plug and play gig, you space is a premium. Which is one of the reasons I never play my upright live ever, because sure. it takes up so much space. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, the, the, the crazy thing, and it's tried and true, time and time again, simple sells. Simple is the way to go, yes. right? You, you yes. gotta keep it simple. Uh, bands that are rolling, bands that are touring, you know, cutting down on the travel costs, whatever you gotta do. I, I dig the rig. Uh, there's something that you have to know about Brandon. He's not just the bass player, right? He's not just the guy that's the bass player. You got all the bass player jokes of out course. there. This dude is a supreme vocalist. The whole front line, something that I appreciate about Three Gun Whiskey is the entire front line throws out on the vocals. And Brandon is that guy that still carries that low end when it comes to the vocals. Reminiscent of something like Waylon Jennings. Right. So, and lower. <laughs> and lower. And even a little bit lower. Ladies and gentlemen, been great to spend some time with you, Brandon. Been a great time. Three Gun Whiskey, Brandon Taylor, Taylor Entertainment, Rig Rundown. Have a great night. The fear tomorrow, one of the things I do today. I pray the bourbon just washes it away. I'm taking the high road. Are you sure? Yeah. I think if you want to, I mean, would it be good for you? I don't care about that. I mean, I. If it'd be good for you, throw it in there. If not, nobody really knows what that is. But and I. <laughs> we are back for segment three. Three. Are we on three? Yes. Oh. We've had a couple whiskeys. Jed's fucking talking in the background. He's trying to tell us where we're at. We're just gonna go with it. <laughs> Gets hard, Dave. Dave, what's happening? Yeah, I feel you. Hey, what do you think that hat? Uh, Farm and Fleet and Champagne. Farm and Fleet? Yeah. I was wondering where you got that. Alright, goddamn. <laughs>